Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our Bay Area Older Adults presentation today. Bay Area Older Adults, called BAO for short, is a nonprofit organization that improves the health and well being of more than 60,000 adults age 50 plus each year through educational, outdoors, and social programs. Thank you for joining us for BAO's Valley Water, Water Conservation Rebates Lecture. My name is Dr. Nusrat Khalili. This is the last of four lecture series on water conservation. I thought this topic might be useful to this group since we are in a severe drought. We need members of the public, such as yourself, to conserve water and undertake water conservation projects at home and take advantage of the rebates that our water agency, Valley Water, offers. Uh, this program is supported by Valley Water. Now, please click on your polling tab for our first question and to get an idea of how much you already know. How many dollars can you get per thousand square feet of landscape conversion in San Jose? Okay, so the correct answer is $3,000 for a thousand square feet of landscape conversion in San Jose. Now, this is an outline of what I'm going to cover in my talk today. First, I'll give you a recap of the previous lecture in this water conservation lecture series that was on outdoor water conservation. Then we will discuss a few of the valley water rebates that can help fund your water conservation projects. I will color, cover other free and low cost resources available to you Lastly, I'll give you a summary of the issues we have covered today. I'm going to cover a lot in this talk today, so please do go ahead and watch the video afterwards to get the links and other details. Uh, this video and others in the series can be found at www.bayareaolderadults.org slash videos. The main point of the Water Conservation Outdoors lecture was to inform you that 50% of water used outdoors is wasted, and we can reduce that waste by doing landscape conversion and increasing irrigation efficiency, amongst other things. Valley Water provides rebates, and some cities provide additional funding to facilitate your water conservation projects. The rebates we will discuss today are shown here. But first, I want to give you the contact information for Valley, Valley Water that's shown on this slide over here. So first, we'll talk about the landscape conversion rebate. Landscape conversion is converting high water use lawn or pool to water-wise yard by changing plants and by changing overhead sprinklers to conventional drip watering system. If you're not planning on doing a landscape conversion, you can still get some rebates from Valley Water, such as the irrigation equipment rebate and the inline drip irrigation rebate. One way to increase irrigation efficiency is by changing out your old controller for a weather-based controller. Another way to increase irrigation efficiency is to change your nozzles for high-efficiency nozzles or change your sprinkler bodies to those with pressure regulators and check valves. If you want to know more about weather-based controllers or sprinkler bodies or nozzles, please do watch my previous lecture on conserving water outdoors. The next rebate we will talk about is for inline drip irrigation, a separate rebate to increase your irrigation efficiency. So what is inline drip irrigation? You know the conventional low pressure, low volume drip irrigation with the micro sprayers and micro bubblers shown in the image on the left. Similarly, inline drip irrigation is also low pressure and low volume. 
It is essentially a tube with regularly spaced holes, emitters, as shown in the image on the right, that can be laid down to water regularly spaced plants. Next, we will talk about rebates for rain capture projects. Rainwater capture may be done in barrels, cisterns, or in a rain garden. Lastly, the gray water laundry to landscape rebate, which diverts wastewater from your clothes washer to water the yard. Several Santa Clara County cities, such as Cupertino, Milpitas, Morgan Hill, Palo Alto, Santa Clara, and San Jose, offer additional funds on some of the rebates. You will need to check the details for your city at the link provided here. So how much of a rebate can I get for my water conservation project? I will get into the details of each rebate, but just want to share some numbers with you in the next couple of slides. I'm talking about single family residents or small multifamily, that's less than four units here, and specifically noting if San Jose gives additional rebate dollars. Other cities may provide different dollar amounts. So the total rebate per address for all your projects is up to $3,000 from Valley Water and a further $1,000 from the city of San Jose. Landscape conversion projects can get $2 per square foot from Valley Water and a further $1 per square foot if your site is in San Jose, up to 1,000 square feet, and then $2 per square foot thereafter. If you are not doing a landscape conversion, you still may be interested in conserving water by retrofitting your irrigation system using irrigation equipment upgrade rebate dollars. You can get rebate dollars by choosing from the Valley Water list of nozzles, $5 per nozzle, sprinkler bodies with pressure regulators and check valves, $20 per body, and up to $2,000 for irrigation controllers, depending on the number of stations slash zones that you are planning on using actively. Also, you can get $50 for rain sensors to go with the controller to help with water conservation. You can also get a rebate for a flow sensor slash hydrometer, which controls water flow and shuts it down in case of blowouts and leaks. A separate rebate you can get is for inline drip irrigation rebate, for which you can get a total of 50 cubic square foot in San Jose. Rain capture rebates are available for rain barrels, cisterns, and rain gardens. $35 per barrel, uh, 50 cents per gallon cistern, so $100 for a 200 gallon cistern. $1 per square foot, up to $300 for a rain garden. Remember, cities may give additional dollars. The gray water rebate is for diverting water from your clothes washer and using it to water plants in your yard. You can get $200 from Valley Water and maybe more from city funds. Here are some general requirements for rebates. You have to have a Santa Clara County address and be the owner or authorized to do the project. Please remember, do not start the project prior to application approval. You will need your water bill, some current photos, and a rough measurement of the square footage of the area you are converting. When choosing replacement plants or replacement equipment, you should start with the Valley Water Qualifying List, which have a lot to choose from. The Valley Water Qualifying List of plants are not necessarily comprehensive. Please contact the San Clara Valley Water District to inquire about using any plants that are not on the list. The first rebate I will tell you about is the landscape conversion rebate. Landscape conversion is transforming your thirsty yard into a beautiful water-wise landscape, replacing lawn or pool with low water use grasses, ground cover, plants, and replacing your high pressure, high volume irrigation sprinklers with micro sprayer and micro drip irrigation. 
Valley Water pays $200 per 100 square feet, and San Jose gives additional $100 per 100 square feet. So you need to measure the approximate square footage of the area you want to convert. It may be in one or more zones. The rebate requires a minimum conversion area of 75 square feet. You're going to have to scan your water bill with the address, water retailer, and account number, as you're going to need to upload it along with three to five photos of the conversion area showing each zone. We recommend you attend the one-hour office hours with water conservation specialists who can help answer any questions you may have. You can see an example of a landscape conversion project on this slide. The area with the low water use plants and wood chips used to be lawn with overhead sprinklers. The conversion involves many steps. You measure the square footage of the lawn you plan to remove because you will need this for your calculation. Remove existing sod and condition the soil as needed. Design a landscape choosing plants from the Valley Water qualifying list, including low water use plants, grasses, and or ground cover as shown on this slide. My previous lecture on water conservation outside your home has some design ideas as well. Remove or retrofit high pressure, high volume irrigation and replace it with low pressure, low volume conventional drip with micro sprayers, micro bubblers, point source emitters and adapters. Some areas will be covered by plants. Other areas are bare soil. You're gonna need to cover that bare soil with weed block and permeable layer of mulch or rocks. Here is the overall process to apply for a Valley Water rebate. You go to that link shown here and click on the green Get Started button on the top right and create an account. Next, you're going to want to start your application part one. Once you have submitted part one, you will schedule a pre-inspection by Valley Water. The landscape conversion rebate requires an on-site inspection. Once that has been completed, submit your application part two. When part two is approved, you will have a notice of approval and a 90 day window to complete your project. Once complete, schedule a post project onsite inspection and take some completed project photos. You can expect your rebate check in four to six weeks. So creating an account is simple. In fact, I hope I will convince you that the whole application is simple. Just enter some basic information about yourself, such as your name and contact information, and create a username and a password. Once you have created an account, you sign in and click on the Start New Application green button towards the top right of the web page. Overall, for part one of the application, you will need to prepare by getting an electronic copy of your water bill with account number, address, and water retailer. Uh, you need to take three to five photos of the lawn that you want to remove and get the square footage. When you get to filling out part one of the application, you will need to enter the information such as your name, phone, email, mailing address, and W-9 information if the rebate is for more than $600, as well as information about the site where the project is located. In the site details, you include your water retail service provider and input your water account number and upload your water bill. Further site information is the address where the project is being done and optionally information to provide direct contact to to the site itself. For each zone you are going to convert, you're going to measure the square footage, um, get the existing irrigation, you'll need to upload the photos. Then you'll need to choose the rebate you are applying for. Right now we are discussing the landscape conversion rebate, so you would choose that and submit part one of the application. However, as you can see here, this same website is used for submitting an application for rebates such as the irrigation efficiency rebate 
the inline drip rebate and the rain capture rebate and the rain garden rebate. Notice that the gray water rebate is not shown here. You need to create a separate account to apply for this rebate. So you'll need to schedule the pre-inspection directly after submitting part one of the application. The on-site pre-inspection is required for landscape conversion and inline drip rebate and is conducted by Valley Water Partner WaterVise. For other rebates, pre-inspection is by photo only. Get pre-inspection done, and in the meantime, you want to get the detailed plans ready before submitting Part 2, because once the Part 2 is approved, you will have a 90-day window to complete the project. You want to uh, create a proposed plant list and a landscape design. The converted area must not have any bare soil. It must be at least 50% covered by plants and 50% by permeable layer, such as mulch or rocks. You're going to cap or remove high volume irrigation and replace it with low volume drip, microsprayers and microbubblers. Then you'll submit part two of the application and wait for a notice to proceed. Once that is issued, you have 90 days to complete your project. You can get some landscape ideas by walking around your neighborhood. You can look online for ideas at calscape.org and southbaygardens.org or UC Davis as shown in the image on the right or ask Valley Water Specialists. You can create a template as seen on the left. You'll measure the square footage of the lawn you want to convert, then design some beds to replace the lawn. Let's say one of the beds is 18 feet by 18 feet. You'll split that area into three foot by three foot squares and note the parts that are in the sun and those that are in the shade of the house at the bottom. You'll view the Valley Water Qualified Plants list and pick plants to get 50% coverage. I will discuss what this means on the next slide. When you go to the Valley Water link shown here, you will find a list of qualified plants. These are low water use plants. You will see the scientific name, common name, coverage, native plant or not, and type of plant, whether it's a tree, shrub, or vine. The coverage is the square feet that the fully grown plant is assigned. To get the rebate from Valley Water, you need to meet their requirements. If you removed 900 square feet of lawn, you need at least 450 square feet of plant coverage. So you pick plants from the qualifying list, decide how many of each plant and figure out how much coverage this gives you. Also, since we do like to pay attention to aesthetics and you probably do not know many of the plants on the qualifying list, you can see photos of plants and check plant details at calscape.org or California Native Plant Society. You can use a spreadsheet such as that shown on the bottom to add up all the plant coverage. So, in the spreadsheet, I have Salvia spathia, also called hummingbird sage. Each plant is assigned 10 square feet coverage. So if I plant two hummingbird sage, that will add up to 20 square feet coverage. I need 450 square foot coverage to get the 50% that Valley Water requires. Here, all the plants I chose added up to 508 square feet shown on the bottom. If you are not into Excel spreadsheets, you may prefer to add up numbers on a piece of paper or enter your plans directly into the rebate application part two. As you go through the application steps, you will get to a table like the one shown here. You choose your plant name and the number of plants in your plan and it adds up the coverage. Since you previously entered the square footage of the lawn you plan to convert, it tells you the total coverage you have. 
and how much more you need to reach the 50%. You will need to watch my previous lecture on water conservation outdoors to know where you can buy the low water use plants since they are not available in all the nurseries. The converted area must have no bare soil. It will end up with 50% plant coverage and 50% permeable layer. The permeable layer may be an organic mulch layer, well composted mulch of fine to medium texture, wood chips or bar big bark, or a permeable hardscape layer such as gravel, lava rock, river rock, quartz rock, stepping stones, etc. The hardscape is more expensive up front but durable and provides good drainage. The complete project and schedule final post inspection. The landscape conversion requires on-site post project inspection. You provide your updated plant list with non-qualifying areas subtracted, such as vegetable gardens, artificial turf, impermeable surfaces, and any remaining lawn. The rebate checks will be issued in four to six weeks. You can check out these links for FAQs and other requirements. You may find some further details here. Now let's talk about the irrigation equipment upgrade rebate. Some folks may not be interested in doing a landscape conversion or may be doing a landscape conversion in only part of their yard. If that is the case, there are still some non-converted areas. You may be interested in improving the irrigation efficiency in non-converted areas by changing out the controller or changing to high efficiency nozzles or sprinkler heads. This is what the irrigation equipment upgrade covers. Requirements for this rebate depend on what part of irrigation you are changing out. First, make a list of the equipment you would like to purchase, choosing from the Valley Water Qualified list found here. When you purchase the equipment, keep the receipts. You will need to upload receipts with retailer, make, model, and price. If upgrading the controller, you need photos of the controller panel with make and model, photos of the inside showing the wiring. For nozzles and bodies, you need two to three photos of the sprinklers you are planning to replace, turned on and functioning. Additionally, you need one to two photos of the make and model of the sprinklers. Finally, you need to provide a count of the existing sprinklers which you plan to replace. When you pick the irrigation upgrade rebate, you will get a rebate number and get a drop-down menu to specify the kind of irrigation equipment you want to upgrade. Once you are done with the install, the system must be free of leaks and malfunctions. In addition, you can't create any runoff, overspray, or misting. So you want to pay attention to that. Now let's talk about the inline drip conversion rebate, which provides funds to install inline drip irrigation. It is useful for regularly spaced plantings or if plants are less than three feet apart. Part of the inline drip irrigation rebate application is shown here. Say you have sprinklers and you're planning on changing to inline drip irrigation. You're gonna need to upload photos of functioning sprinklers running that you want to replace with the inline drip and enter the zone square footage and the drip sprinklers that you're going to install. The inline drip rebate is for non-converted areas of your yard. Besides the landscape conversion rebate, it is the only other rebate that requires an on-site pre-inspection. Converting overhead irrigation to drip irrigation and existing shrub perennial and annual planting beds can reduce water lost from wind, misting, overspray, and runoff, often associated with sprinkler systems. You are probably more familiar with outline or conventional drip irrigation, which has the little micro emitter shown in the image on the left. This rebate is for inline drip shown in the image on the right. 
Inline drip tubing is recommended over conventional drip irrigation because it is less susceptible to clogging and fittings become disconnected, requires less maintenance and has a longer useful life. Valley Water provides a list of qualifying inline drip tubing with a flow rate of one gallon per hour or less to be used for the inline drip irrigation conversion rebate. This list is not intended to be the qualifying list for any drip irrigation installed within the landscape conversion rebate area, which uses the outline or conventional drip irrigation. Let me clarify further on the next slide. The forms of drip irrigation shown on this image do not qualify for inline drip irrigation rebate. These include micro drip, micro sprayer, point source emitters, point source adapters, bubblers, and soaker hoses. These are acceptable to use in the landscape conversion rebate but no separate rebate is offered for these forms of drip irrigation. Next, let's talk about the rain capture rebate. Valley Water offers rebates to purchase rain barrels, cisterns, that is greater than or equal to 200 gallons, or to create a rain garden to capture the water coming out of your downspouts when it rains. A rain barrel is from 40 to 199 gallons and a cistern is a minimum of 200 gallons. Valley Water gives $35 per barrel and 50 cents per gallon cistern, so $100 for 200 gallon cistern and $1 per square foot up to $300 for a rain garden. Remember, cities may give additional dollars. Labor, installation, construction costs, delivery charges, hauling, tax, and discounts are not included in the qualifying costs and are not eligible for rebate. Now let's go over some of the cistern and rain barrel requirements. The property must have existing downspouts and gutters along the perimeter of the roof for adequate water collection. They must be mounted in a way that allows the rain barrel slash cistern to receive all the water unimpeded from a downspout. You will need at least one photo of the downspout that will deliver the water to the barrel. Rainwater should not be harvested from roofs with untreated metal, galvanized, copper, treated wood, lead flashing, or asbestos. The barrel must have a secure lid for child safety debris control, an overflow spigot, and screening for vector control. It is recommended that the barrel slash cistern be safely secured to a building structure if the height of the barrel is tw two times greater than the width. The rain barrels or cistern is going to be placed six inches off the ground on a solid foundation and have a spigot for hose within three inches of the bottom of the barrel. The captured rainwater must be used by bucket or by connecting the hose to the barrel. Only the old-fashioned bucket or hose method is allowed. Overflow water should be directed back into the downspout system to a drain or to a suitable rain garden that can absorb the water on site at an appropriate rate. Installation must comply with any city guidelines or permitting requirements and must follow manufacturer's instructions. Some cities, like Palo Alto, have its own additional rain barrel rules, so you need to check your city rules as well. The rain barrel rebate form is shown here. You can see some of the rebate requirements here, such as the need for photos of existing downspouts, and also note that you can request a rebate for more than one rain barrel. In addition to the rain barrel requirements we just covered, there are some additional cistern requirements. Cistern materials shall be hard plastic, fiberglass, or metal, and must continuously hold its shape. It must have a capacity of at least 200 gallons, and documentation must be provided for verifying the total holding capacity. For the rain garden, you are capturing rainwater from your roof in gutters to through the downspouts and diverting the water released from the downspout into the rain garden. 
The rain garden must be located at least 10 feet from the foundation and you will need to install at least three feet of large river rocks near the downspout to prevent erosion. The rain garden requires a pit of at least 1.5 feet deep where the soil needs to be amended and plants with low water, planted with low water use plants. The square footage requirement of the rain garden is discussed on the next slide. The rain garden rebate will be calculated based on the square footage of the roof area contributing to the redirected rainwater. Only the contributing roof area connected to the downspout extension will be factored into the rebate. A roof measurement example is shown. A minimum of 100 square feet of contributing roof area must be diverted to the rain garden, and the rain garden must be a minimum of 24 square feet. Rain garden will be sized up according to the square footage of the contributing roof area using the table shown here. You will need at least one photo of the downspout that will be used to water the rain garden. This is the rebate form for the rain garden. You will need to estimate the square footage of each conversion zone. It cannot be in the same area accounted for the landscape conversion rebate or the inline drip irrigation rebate. What are included in the rain capture rebate? The rain barrel, the cistern, the rain garden, or all of the above? So the correct answer is all of the above indeed. So the next uh, rebate I'll talk to you about is the gray water rebate. The gray water laundry to landscape setup diverts the water from your clothes washer to water the plants in the yard. The diagram shows how this might be done. Water leaving the clothes washer usually goes down the drain, but instead it is diverted to water an area in the yard just outside, and you create um, mulch basins around the plants to absorb that water. The rebate is for up to $400, but the cost of setting it up may be like anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000. If you are thinking of doing this, you want to check out the website for detailed setup and requirements. Then ask the following questions. If the answer is yes or possibly, then you may qualify for the less than 50 feet from the first plant you plan on watering. Is the landscape you plan on watering downhill from the clothes washer? Are there trees, shrubs, and decorative plants that you plan on watering using the gray water? Certain plants get priority. The gray water outlet must be located more than 1.5 feet from the foundation and from the property boundary. The landscape must be large enough to absorb the water and have mulch basins around the plants. Now let's talk about other low cost and free resources. There are the lawn busters or water link where you can get installation help, but then you'll forego the valley water rebate. There are the California water service lawn to garden and or the spray to drip rebates which you may be able to take advantage of as well. Now for some final thoughts. Valley water rebates can help pay for your water conservation projects at home. There are five types of rebates available to you. The landscape conversion rebate, the irrigation equipment rebate, the inline drip rebate, rain capture rebate, and the gray water rebate. We also discussed how you may get additional funds from the city and other resources and rebates that are available.